and analysis, rhetorical and visual understanding of genre. This is your next assignment, which focuses on analyzing one or more genres. Okay. All right, so looking at that, let's look at the basics and the guidelines. Your assignment must be in APA format. You can find that in on Blackboard. It must be Times New Roman 12 point font. You must include a title page, the actual body of the paper, the analysis must be four pages, and then you have a reference page, which totals out to six pages. Um, and looking at the APA format, you're mostly focused on how to cite in text and how to format the cover and title page. Okay, so that's the biggest thing with APA format. All right, so getting started. First, you're gonna choose a genre or genres related to your semester topic. Now the genre you select must include text and visual elements. Um, you may choose two separate genres, one that is text-based or rhetorical-based, and one that is visual. Okay, in selecting those genres, they must be related to your topic, and I'll get a little bit more into that. Um, what you're looking at is, say your topic is child abuse, then you're gonna wanna choose two genres that focus on child abuse, or one that focuses on child abuse, but they must include text and visual elements, okay? Um, if you decide to choose two different ones, the only commonality that they need is your topic. They can approach it differently, so that's fine. If you choose a poster that's completely different from an article you choose, there's no set thing as far as that's concerned. All right, so the visual genres that you can look at include posters, photos, collages, videos, political cartoons, things of that nature. Uh, rhetorical text-based genres, Okay, you're looking at articles, book chapters, informational posters, or any multimedia which includes some type of narration. That's going to be the rhetorical part. Okay, now you can choose a combination. The combination would be like things like PSAs, a commercial, an article with an attached photo or photos, uh, posters with textual elements, and then films that include both visual and textual themes as well. Okay, so these these are just a few of them. These are the most common ones you might choose, um, but you're not limited to these but these are the most common, as I said. All right, so let's go ahead and look at your initial objective. All right, upon selecting your genres, you're gonna shift your focus to the analysis. The objective of the analysis to, is to analyze how genres construct, and not so much what the genre is describing or showing. Um, so in other words, your focus for this paper is on how genres argument is effective, right? So you're gonna accomplish this by looking at ethos, logos, pathos, and intended audience for both the rhetorical and the visual aspects of your genre genres. So you want to be sure when you analyze the rhetorical and the visual, you analyze them separately. And I'm going to show you more or less the construction of that in this video, but I also have tools for that on Blackboard at your disposal. Okay, so going back to the how, you need to focus on the construction of it not necessarily what they're saying so if they're talking about let's say something about child abuse if that's your topic you're not focused on what they're saying and your understanding of it in that sense you're understanding how they put it together what went into putting it together okay and then just please make note of this here this is important going forward for the assignment all right, so let's look at ethos first ethos looks at the ethics of the author or the creator of a given work you know, we want to focus on how an author creates and sustains credibility, right? Ethos looks at the integrity and credibility of a work, right? So when you're looking at ethos, you're looking at the author who constructed it, right? You're obviously looking, does he know the subject he's talking about? Um, is he a writer? Is he well-versed in this field? Or is he just some run-of-the-mill person that's never written about this and thought he'd take a crack at it? Okay, so those are things you want to focus on when you're looking at ethos. Is, is this person credible and do they have integrity? or are they just out to call attention to themselves um, and not really worried about if they're being professional or not so that's what you want to look at um, that also goes into being trustworthy and being objective um, is the information objective and does it intend to inform the audience in a fair manner right um, if something's subjective you want to be sure to make sure you want to be sure to look at are they putting things together um from both sides of the argument or are they just giving one side and that's it that's something to pay attention to when you're looking at ethos okay you want to also look at their expertise that's very important um if i'm a writer for a science magazine and i start writing about something i don't know like let's say fashion then that's a conflict and doesn't work okay now looking at logos logos looks at the logic of an argument the reasoning behind a position okay 
the clarity of a claim or the subject which is usually supported through factual or statistical evidence in other words how do the author how does the author use logic and supporting evidence to make a claim all right so how is he using his facts how is he using his data to support the argument he's making all right if someone is saying that child abusers grow up to be um, in the system in the prison system is there supporting evidence to justify that or is he just going off on a tangent and not really giving you information to help that out okay and this also goes into a couple of things you know you want to look at is the argument itself credible all right are the facts and the statistics he's using are they from good sources um, are these sources capable of carrying this argument or are they just from um, outdated sources from let's say 1975 and we're in the year 2014 you want to make sure the sources that are available are accurate and they are fairly up to date those are some big things you want to look into when you're looking at logos okay credibility is the biggest thing is this person capable of carrying this argument is the argument being carried correctly okay so let's look at pathos when we're thinking of pathos we think of passion which is an emotion because of this, we associate pathos with emotional appeals. Okay, so pathos is meant to examine how the subject matter makes us feel, it is the experience itself. Okay, so when we're looking at pathos, we're looking at a couple of things. We're looking at the tone of the content, um, what tone is being created. Is it meant to make us feel angry? Is it meant to make us feel happy? Is it meant just simply to educate us? All right, when you're looking at that, you're looking for clues, you're looking for how the language is constructed. Um, in the case of a visual, you're looking at how the colors are constructed, all right? How are colors being used to bring out a certain emotion? If blue's being used, is blue being used to bring out sadness or sorrow? Um, whereas something like red is more passionate and possibly angry. Okay, so you're looking at the vividness of language and the emotion of the language. And the same thing with colors and, you know, images that are presented when we're looking at pathos. So pathos is probably the easiest of the three to kind of understand and comprehend because it has to do with what emotion are they trying to get out of the audience and why are they trying to pull that emotion out. So those are two things you want to look at. What is the emotion? Why is it the emotion? And how is that emotion being constructed? All right, so those are more or less the three things you're looking at. Um, and then you're looking at audience. Who's the intended audience and why? Why is that the intended audience? How is the intended audience being brought in? Those are the basic things you're looking at. And I'm going to show you now what I'm looking for specifically on the analysis in terms of those three things. All right. So looking at ethos, you're looking at for the rhetorical analysis, you should focus on the author's credibility. What experience does the author have with the subject matter? What makes him trustworthy in terms of the subject? Is this argument being presented a credible one? So you're looking at these three things, these three questions when you're looking at the rhetorical part of the analysis. And the rhetorical refers to either something that's being said orally or the text that's being written. Okay, so if you're looking at an article, then you're looking at the textual information. If you're looking at something like an interview, you're listening to more what they're saying and what's being used in the argument, who that arguer is, right? So when you're looking at ethos, look at the arguer. That's the biggest thing. Um, so let's go back and let's look at the visual aspect. Right, so looking at the visual aspect, the visual analysis, you want to examine the creator of the visual's credibility. If the visual and the textual creator happen to be one and the same, um, is her credibility backed up in both fields? So are they well versed to handle both, you know, a visual aspect of the field and a rhetorical aspect? And then you want to look at, you know, does the strength of the visual have an effect in this? Is there credibility in this visual itself? Okay, so you're looking at two things with the visual. You're looking at the credibility of the author who created the visual and then the visual itself to stand on its own of aspect of credibility. Okay, so we're, now we're looking at the logos, the rhetorical analysis. All right, this focuses on the argument's credibility. Okay, does the argument provide strong and suitable evidence? You know, items such as statistics, interviews, data, research will qualify as evidence. Um, is this evidence of good quality and quantity? Meaning, is there a steady amount of sources being used? Um, that would be the quantity, okay? And does the argument heavily rely on one source? If it heavily relies on one source, would it be more beneficial for it to include more sources? If so, describe how so, okay? And then you want to look at, you know, are the sources credible? Um, are all these sources being used credible? Or any of them even, are there some credible ones and one that are kind of flaky? You want to look at that. And then you want to look at, are they, and not only are they credible, but 
are they credible in terms of the topic? You know, and then you want to look at, you know, does the rhetoric create a bias? If it does, is this interview with the quality of the argument? If so, how? All right. So if there's a bias and it's creating it unevenly, you know, is it affecting the way we see the argument? And then lastly, you want to look at, you know, is the argument being made inductive or deductive? Okay. So when we're looking at inductive and deductive, you want to look at two different things. Deductive means drawing from general examples and creating a new truth, whereas inductive is drawing from specific examples to create a general proposition or a conclusion. Okay, that's the easiest way to describe it at this point. If you want more information on that, please ask me and I'll be happy to help. Um, all right, so let's look at the visual aspect of logos. You don't want to focus on the visuals argument, how it is constructed. Is the visual organized? Does the organization parallel with the argument? Okay, you want to examine if the visual uses effective visual evidence to support the argument. Does the visual create a logical argument? If so, how does it do so? Okay, so when we're looking at that, we're looking at two things. What I mean by organization paralleling the argument. So if the argument is made to be that child abuse is wrong and it should be prevented, is the visual kind of mirroring that idea? Okay, is it a, is a visual metaphor for what we're seeing? All right, so looking at pathos, we're gonna look at the rhetorical analysis here too. All right, so what you're looking at is what attempts is the writer making to invoke an emotion out of the reader? Okay, does the emotional appeal help or hurt the argument? And then does the language help determine the argument's emotional appeal? So when you're looking at these things, you wanna look at specific words. You wanna identify words or phrases that are being used and kind of quote and take examples from the rhetoric that kind of exemplifies what emotion is being brought out or what emotion are they trying to attempt to bring out of you, the reader. Okay, so you wanna be very specific here and use specific words or phrases to show the emotion that you think is being presented. All right, so moving on to the visual aspect of pathos, we're looking at what emotion is the visual setting um, how did you arrive at this conclusion? All right. So just based off looking at the visual, what emotion do you think the visual is trying to bring out of you? And then you would justify that by looking at the colors, um, looking at the text color as well as the font size. All right. So looking at colors, you want to look at what colors are being shown and why are they being shown and what emotion are those colors trying to bring out of you and how are they doing that? You know, same thing with lighting. If you're looking at a photo, how is the lighting being used? Um, these are very important things to look at. And then text color is just as important. Is it contrasting the argument or is it assisting it? And then for audience, audience is looking at all three components of the ethos, pathos, and logos. And you're kind of determining who the audience is for both genres. Um, you can want to look at how this is being presented and how we arrive at this conclusion. Um, and you want to provide specific examples. So if you think the intended audience for child abuse is parents, well, why is it parents and not teens? You want to describe that. You want to convince me that this is true, that this is actually what is happening, that the analysis does show this, that parents are in fact the audience as opposed to teens. Now, keep in mind, there can be multiple audiences. It does not just have to be one. Okay, so then keep in mind, right? You're only going to do the next section, the next section that I'm going to have if you selected one genre if you selected two genres you're not doing the next section in your paper this is only for those who selected one genre okay so now you want to analyze both the visual and rhetorical as one genre you want to examine these questions as you analyze both elements together all right so you want to see which is predominant the text or the visual do they complement each other does the visual add information that the text did not discuss how does the visual deepen understanding of the text where is the visual placed in the text and then what would the text be like if the visual was missing so these are questions to consider you don't necessarily have to answer each and every one of them but i would answer a few of them and see how they apply okay obviously if you're doing a film you don't have to worry about where the visual is placed in the text it just depends on what type of source you used um, so these were put into context depending on what source you used that's the biggest thing to take away from that okay so moving on so moving on, the biggest thing you're going to take from this analysis is just piecing together and looking at it and deconstructing how the source was constructed. Okay, You want to answer a lot of hows and why that's happening and you want to be very specific in your details. You want to examine every aspect, the ethos, logos, the pathos, and the audience for both the rhetorical and the visual. Okay, Just to recap. Um, 
I have samples that are available for you that you're going to use. And then I also have a guide that shows you more or less how I want the paper constructed. Use that guide. Um, it will be your Bible for this assignment. Okay. We're going to spend the next few weeks studying these concepts. So if you're not fully grasping them at this point, rewatch the video, come prepared. And then we're also going to use them in class to help you better understand.